Hello, Guru Nation. Welcome back to another episode of the Clinical Trials Guru, sponsored by the CRA Academy behind me. We've got Victoria. Victoria's on. She's a viewer. At least I think she's a viewer of the channel. Are you a subscriber, Victoria? Yes, I am. You have to subscribe, like, hit the bell button, and comment. I am a subscriber. I've commented. I'll follow you religiously. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> because, you know, three out of four people that watch it, my average video do not subscribe. So I have to tell people, guys, please subscribe. Help me out. But Victoria is just like you guys out there. Okay, she's um, naive. We're going to get a little bit into her story. And then she's got an interview coming up. So I got a lot of questions myself for you, Victoria. But before we go any of that complicated stuff, let's talk about you, your background, and how did you first get interested in clinical research? All right, so I currently work as a clinical document specialist and also um, quality assurance um, person. But oh, very good. Yeah, but what I do, um, literally, I cover varieties of different job duties based on what I do. And for example, and this is how I connected it to clinical research. So for example, we have the referral team members in the hospital settings um, that, you know, uh, call patients, take patients information, pull them in there, assign the physicians to them and introduce whatever care they're supposed to be receiving. Okay. Then we have the clinicians, the nurses, who go into that particular system, assign themselves to these patients per their medical director saying, hey, I need this particular thing to work on this particular person or a number of persons in the geographical location is already been signed. So the nurses or clinicians go in there, um, establish, you know, their relationship with these patients in the um, ECG, I would say, is it ECG? <laughs> I would say. Yeah. Um, in our systems. But and clinical then, document yeah. specialists. So what, what kind of organization is this? A hospital or academic center? What is this? So, so it is a, it is a, so it is a, for me, I'm on the home health side. However, in as much as I'm on the home health side, I work with I work with hospitals in every healthcare system, and then I'm also responsible for um, the entire DMV area because I'm on the East Coast. So okay. I'm responsible Maryland, for entire... Virginia, DC. And if if and if some of these patients or physicians are in California or or Philadelphia or New York, I'm also responsible for them. Okay, so you are in the healthcare setting, but you're not you're not doing clinical research activities right now. No, so that's what I'm about to explain. Okay. Because it's so lengthy, and I need you to help to guide me. Okay. This. Yeah, we're gonna help you out. We're gonna help you get this job. <laughs> Yay! So, <laughs> so yeah, so um, the clinicians going, um, and then they go to visit these patients. They establish care. Example: all the patient coming to the hospital. They've established care at the start of care, which could be uh, the protocols, okay? Now, after that, they're entering uh, uh, these medical report in the system. What therapy was given, what care, who the physician was, who the following or attending physician is, the future care that is supposed to, you know, happen in the medication, what was this continuum, blah, 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 whatever. After they've entered it, my responsibility as a QA and a document, clinical document specialist is to go in there now to verify, which is to monitor, to verify that everything that has been entered is actually accurate. Now, is this in a research or a healthcare setting? Interesting. This is a healthcare setting, but okay. I'm also okay. doing research as well in, in, an, you know, in an aspect. So I'm going in there and making sure they're actually putting in everything in every system that's supposed to be in there, including um, the paper copy of it. Now, if something is missing based on the healthcare plan that's supposed to be, which is again, the protocol, maybe they have the wrong physician in there, they have the wrong date, they didn't sign something, medication is missing, whatever it is, I query the nurses, the clinicians. The, I can even query a physician. I usually will call a medical facility, it could be a hospital, it could be a clinic, 
Mm -hmm. I'll call them and say, hey, you know, what's going on? This is missing what's happening in here. Mm -hmm. And then if I have to go to the particular site and visit these clinicians or the, 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 the physicians and have a conversation and pull out all of the medical report. And if something changed, if there was an amendment, we have to go in there and fix it. So I'm responsible for all that. I'm also responsible for training, educating um, the clinicians and the physicians, which again, the sites as it relates to providing care, how they're supposed to provide it as it relates to documentation, what's supposed to be documented, um, as it relates to any question they may have. And I'm also looking at the financial aspect of it. So I'm running reports, I'm training, I'm going to different medical facilities that don't even employ me but because we have patients that see those physicians out there and we have these relationships i'm going out there and training them as well so this is just a little no, i get that i get the healthcare stuff but how where where does the research play in um okay so the research part for me is being able to go into the system and look to monitor to look and see what's missing in there What's missing in the patient care? What's okay. what, what, what is this particular physician? Is he okay. still active? Is he still not active? Uh, 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 I mean, what 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 the nurse isn't doing in there? So, but it's all from I mean, a I'm, clinical setting, right? Like it's not actually nobody's in a research study or anything like this. No, so it's all from a clinical. It's all from a clinical okay. setting standpoint. However, um, within my department. They kind of put research over it because I'm on the home health side. If I was supposed to be in the hospital, it would have been research because I'm also uh, working with you. research sites. I got, well. you. I got you. So basically, um, for okay, so healthcare. So technically, not truly research naive, but almost. Mm -hmm. You're almost a research naive, but not truly. You do have some experience in research, but I can see on the clinical side. All the stuff you mentioned is all the stuff that CRAs do. I mean, this is the what they call transferable skills. Right. So my question to you is, because uh, you must have been applying for jobs. Uh, so on your resume, did you have research on there at all? Or was it yes. just clinical yes. document specialist? What did you put on your resume? So initially when I started applying, so interestingly, initially when I started applying, I was looking for other positions. To be honest with you, um, I wasn't as aware of clinical research associate because I'm not in a hospital setting. And I've been on this side for going to six years now. Mm -hmm. And when I started doing research and I came across, you know, clinical research as, uh, associate, which is exactly similar to what I do. So almost the same thing of what you're doing. Except, yeah, except for the acronyms, you know, and mm -hmm. certain things. So um, that's when I got interested because I'm more, I'm more interested in, you know, the development of the drugs and blah, blah, blah. So then I went ahead and put in a, a, a clinical document specialist. Okay. And, and quality assurance. And then I also put clinical research. That's okay. what I put on my resume. Because, and you put clinical research because the company uh, does have you do some research related activities, albeit yes. very, um, maybe not even directly, but you are involved to some extent. Right. So I understand. I understand mm -hmm. now. So it makes sense why they would. Uh, so is this your first interview? You have an interviews coming up. Yeah, I have, I have a couple of interviews coming up. Um, I had like three interviews last week. On Friday, same day. Because CDS, a clinical document specialist uh, in the CRO world, it's the same name. Uh, it's basically the people who are managing the trial master file and putting regulatory documents in there and things like that. So um, the, the, the title is similar to what CROs are used to already. And right. uh, it seems like it's pretty much the same thing you're doing other than you're not necessarily dealing with uh, regulatory documents, right? Like 1572 or are you? No, yeah, so so here's the thing. So if, so on the flip side, I'm not doing um, the 1572 or the SIV and the rest of them, those financial forms, but on my side where I work, cause I'm working with all of the insurance and 
Part and actually Medicare and Medicaid, mm -hmm. I'm following their own regulatory documents, their guidelines. Okay. And so I have some forms that I have to complete and also in the HR system as well. And as far as the reports you're doing right now, what kind of reports are you doing? Like because you're doing QA, which is what a CRA does. So what kind of um what are your reports? Like you're auditing uh, what the clinicians and how they're treating the patients? Mm -hmm. So what I do, my report come up to uh, mo monitoring. Uh, sometimes I will monitor all of the clinicians, maybe in Maryland, DC and Virginia. I'll monitor that entire team. Um, I'm monitoring the entire site as it relates to what they are doing in accordance with protocol in accordance with our procedures and with the Medicare, Medicaid guidelines. And okay, regulations. okay, okay. So, and who writes the protocol? Like what, what protocol is this? What, what, who are you following? So the protocol is coming from uh, the, the, my hospital, because it, it also has mm -hmm. a hospital mm -hmm. setting and then it has the home health side. So they, they have their own uh, protocols, I mean, their own, thing they have already set up okay. and then we also have the HHS Medicare Medicaid guidelines that we have to okay. follow, which is the you. overall yeah and so I'm comparing these two making mm -hmm. sure that they're following it and again like external clinics that I'm not working for but I have to monitor as well I have to make sure they're yeah doing okay it makes sense now so normally when, when people text me and anyone can by the way 949-415-6256 let them know, Victoria, you texted me today, I texted you right back, right? Wasn't that right. long? Immediately. Uh, immediate. Yep. It works faster. 949-415-6256. Uh, Basically, whenever somebody texts me like, hey, Dan, I'm research naive, but I want to be a CRA. I say, you know what? Unless you're a registered nurse, you know, Victoria, you watch the video. Yeah. Unless you're a registered nurse, you have no chance. In your right. case, I think there's an exception because I think you may not get the first job but you know if you keep applying i think you're gonna get because there's this transferable skills are so similar what you know i think you can get it if worst case scenario you can get clinical document specialist at a cro and then you do it now you're in completely in research you're kind of in research but mostly in healthcare setting uh, so you want to be completely in research if you want to be a CRA. So I think you actually have a good chance. Okay. For most people, I recommend CRA Academy because we get you the experience right. in your case. I think you probably don't need it because the stuff you're doing is so transferable, what we call transferable skills. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this employer, my only concern is if this recruiter read your resume and doesn't fully understand that your experience with research is um, not so much as your healthcare experience, right? If they're aware of this, then you're okay. If they're not aware, but they're expecting you to have research experience and ends up you don't, they might, they might have been confused. Uh, that's so my only concern. The, yeah, yeah, here's the thing. And, and, and this is what worried me a little bit. Um, like I said, I had uh, three interviews on this on Friday, which was since I started mm -hmm. applying um, uh -huh. from last week was my very first interview and it just happened back, back to back, right? Yeah. I wasn't prepared because I had not, uh, uh, what you call it, okay. rehearsed and studied for this particular uh, interview. So I didn't know exactly what to say to them. Mm -hmm. But after that, I, I have a couple of uh, physician friends that are also in research. Okay. Um, and, and then I have a couple of friends that also work in research. So you had three interviews already for different yeah. companies? Yeah, for different companies. But they didn't go well? No, it didn't go well because um, one of the interviews, the first interview I had, um, this person actually wanted was for a research coordinator, but okay. it was in New York and it wanted me to be on site. I see. Okay. Right. And then the second one, uh, was for clinical trial assistant position. Okay. And like you're saying, she didn't understand exactly mm -hmm. what I do. Mm -hmm. And literally, clinical uh, uh, trial assistant to me is just clinical administrative assistant right. adding documentation on there, which is something that I uh, Yeah, yeah. I do more than that. Um, so she didn't understand, which was fine. 
And then yeah. I have this other interview with um, this guy who was looking for a senior a CRA. Okay, yeah, that one, you're not going to get that one. <laughs> no, definitely. And so, but, but I was able to get him to talk to me a little bit. Um, because I, I apologize to him. I was like, I'm sorry, you know. Um, yeah, I, I mean, you're not lying on your resume. It's the truth. Clinical document specialist is just, right. they think in research, they think that that's something else. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so then, then when I explained what I explained to you, and then he said, um, I think you can go for a entry level CRA versus just going straight to senior sense uh, you know and so he took my information and said he was okay i agree now, with him i think most people i would say no you have no chance to be a cra mm -hmm. with no research experience in your case right. you do because you do have some research experience very small but mm -hmm. still do but you're a document specialist right and you're doing all Ooh. the things that a cra is doing all exactly. the things exactly that's the thing so 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 but it's not a guarantee either victoria like it's uh the it's le like your chance is less than 50 50 honestly but you with enough applications you can get it done i think in your but, but here is the interesting thing okay so um like i was saying these friends that i have in cra's um because I, I work with them as well i go on site and i work with them and so they were like send me a resume we're gonna tailor your resume you know per uh, the job descriptions okay. and I've had a couple of, couple of uh, info, you know, conversation with them where they're saying, I mean, it's no different. Now they went ahead and totally changed my resume and then used some uh, CRAs or research clinical trials acronyms, acronyms on, mm -hmm. you know, my resume, which was yesterday. And so I started applying again. That was when I got this interview. Okay. Um, I told you for Thursday, and because so, you've actually done those things with your friends, you've shadowed and, them. And I know I, people who have done this, and um, also it's worked. You know, another yeah. Victoria actually that I interviewed did the same thing. You know, she took a class, and then she did a shadowing with some with some CRAs, and uh, she was able to put all her transferable skills and all her experience. Right. What you've done as experience, right? That's so, exactly what that's exactly what it is. So my fear, my fear was okay, um, in as much as currently where I work, I'm not in the clinical trial session, even though I do work with them and I cover exactly the same thing. Yeah. Now my resume has all of these uh, medical terminology on it. Yeah. I hope they're not going to see it like if they give me the opportunity to explain, I can explain, but I hope they're not going to see it like I'm trying to lie because I'm not. Honestly. Right. Right. No, I understand. Um, yeah. So I would say you, let's say you apply to, let's say you do 10 interviews for entry level CRA. Mm -hmm. You might, you might get one or two. I okay. think somebody completely like no clinical document, uh, specialist, no experience like in healthcare mm -hmm. has no chance, right? So you have a chance. Okay. It's still probabilities against you still, right? but I think you have a much better chance than most who are research naive because of the experience you've had with your friends shadowing mm -hmm. and because of what you're currently doing in your job right so and and if they really like you they they may say hey we're not going to give you a cra but we might put you like an in-house cra or something which okay. is also a step in the right direction for you okay so the first thing i recommend i mean i don't know if you have the book comprehensive guide to clinical research but i know your interview is coming up soon mm -hmm. so you are probably going to need to get the audio book okay because okay. you can get that today and listen to it before your interview I listened to the, is it four hours crash course? Yeah, four hours, but here's the. Or turn a complex subject matter into an easier. All right, this is what you need to get because your interview's in two days. So just get that book, listen okay. to it like three times. It's only 10 hours. So okay. listen to it like double speed three times. You're going to get all the regulatory because what you're missing is the regulatory form. You, they're going to ask you, well, what's a 1572? What's an um, uh What is the IRB approval letter? How do you get sites started up quickly? Uh, what are the forms they need? What are the, I mean, you know a lot of this stuff, but a lot of that you can get it from that book. If okay. you can demonstrate, 
that you understand those terms from that uh -huh. book, I think you're going to be good. So I think you need this audio book immediately like, okay. right now. And okay. then um, they're going to ask you because if, if so, they're going to know you're research naive when you start talking, but your transferable skills are so similar that they're they might take a chance on you. Um, but I think more of like an in-house CRA or something okay. like that. Um, but they might what's ask you scenario. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go what's ahead. Go ahead. What's the difference between an in-house CRA and then a CRA? So a CRA actually um, does the monitoring for like the QA, which is another thing you've done, right? You've done QA, so I'm you have another that. thing in your favor. Mm -hmm. Monitor does QA, so source data verification, source data review and regulatory. The in-house CRA are more of an assistant to the CRA. So okay. they tell the CRA, this is what the site is missing. Before you your next monitoring visit, I'm going to try to obtain these documents from okay. them. Like they're missing uh, their latest protocol signature page of mm -hmm. the latest amendment. Uh, so I'm going to try to collect that for you. If I can get it, I'm going to give it to you. If not, it's going to be for you. On, on your list to do. So you're like helping your support for the CRA. Okay. It's like one step just right underneath the CRA. Okay. So I think definitely something like that you can do. Um, but they might take you on because you're, I don't know, this is like an exception of what I tell people, but um, your transferable skills are very similar. Uh, and you even know lots about the medical conditions, right? Like medications, Mm -hmm. side effects compliance with medication and all those kind yeah. of things too right so i think they're gonna if they start getting into like scenario based questions like um i don't know what happens when uh what happens when uh, a site has um investigational product that has gone through a temperature excursion what do you do what are you supposed to do as the cra you know, and they, they might ask you things like that. Wow. They might ask you very specific stuff. Like, what do you do if uh, the informed consent was updated with a, with a newer version? And when you monitor, you discover that they're using the old version on the subjects instead of the newer version. You know, they want to hear that that's obviously... A deviation that's a gcp violation that's a major protocol deviation right, right? Mm -hmm. so you need to know all the big things you're going to get that in the book all those big things okay. but they might ask you other things like um um what do you do in the event of a protocol deviation you know what do you do um and they might ask you like more specific but basically there's deviations that affect patient safety and there's deviations that don't mm -hmm. And then the ones that affect right. patient safety require RRB, RRB notification. The other ones don't. So they're going to ask you, they might ask you a lot of scenario based things. But I'm if they. Sure. Yeah. It's going to be 45 minutes video. So I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Your best bet is that they understand what exactly what you've done in your previous job, because a lot of those things are transferable. But the fundamentals okay. of research, like good clinical practice, do you, by the way, do you have good clinical practice certification? Yeah, we do. No. So this particular company is not required, is not requesting for that. Uh, you should get it though. You should get, okay. there's links. I could send you a link mm -hmm. and you can do it within four hours. Okay. And you should bring that to your interview. Say, I have GCP certification as well. Okay. Because every CRA is going to need that. Um, okay. And that's free, completely free. And oh, okay. you're going to learn in that in those modules a lot of the uh, fundamentals of research too. So okay. between that and my audiobook, which is really like more of the practical stuff, mm -hmm. you have a decent chance. Okay, but I still think eight out of ten are going to say no. One out of those ten might say, well, maybe not as a CRA, and then the other one maybe. Maybe, you know, okay. people are really needing CRAs right now. There's a shortage. Okay. So that's my recommendations for you. Be prepared so for a lot of scenario-based, situational-based. And then if, if you tell them, well, I never worked in actual clinical research outside of just what my employer does and a little bit of shadowing, 
with my colleagues. But a similar situation in my current job is always try to bring it back to your current okay. job and how you would how you would solve that issue. Uh, okay. Never not have an answer. Okay. Okay. And then okay. the more you can understand of the fundamentals. Okay. Okay. Let's let's hear. Let's hear this it again. It's important for Look the reader to keep in mind that every situation on, guys, in clinical research. This is needs... like me and Chris reading this. It's riveting. Um, so you <laughs> gotta you gotta like know that stuff. You gotta know the uh, GCP module. So you're gonna take that. And then I think you have a chance. I think you have okay. a chance. Okay. Uh, normally I would say don't even bother. I mean, just go, but don't expect it. I think you can expect, but it's on a lower end of the probability. Okay. All right, awesome. All right, so I'm gonna get um I'm gonna try to get the book tonight. Um and I'm yes. gonna do this particular module, get the GCP thing. I'm gonna send you the GCP right now in the chat. Right. right. Let me pull um, it up. Okay. So my question to you, um, because I have all of these things on my resume um for my current position. I mean, I've shadow, I visit sites, I evaluate sites and the rest of it for what I do. Um, how do I, how do I go about telling them, even though as I shadow, you know, people, clinicians or CRAs or, you know, and within my current position, like, how do I put these wordings together so it doesn't look like I'm being not honest? That's why, that's my biggest fear. Mm. I think where it says research things, I think mm. you need to put um, shadowing. Okay, all right, that sounds good. But now when you edit your CV, you gotta add your GCP certification because okay. that's very important. And uh, that's something you can do today. All right. And it's for free. Like I said, normally, I just put the link there. Normally, I would tell people, look, to just go for the experience but you're not gonna get the job. In your case, I think you have a small percent chance, but it's still, it's a fighting chance. It's a fighter's yeah. chance. <laughs> yeah. And if they like your complement your uh transferable skills, which is literally all of your job description is transferable, like everything. Mm -hmm. Combine with GCP, combine with a decent knowledge through the book and GCP module, mm -hmm. you have a fighting chance. Okay. So I would say go for it, keep applying, don't stop. Maybe do like 20. If you do 20 interviews and they all tell you the same thing, then I think you need to re have a new strategy. But in your case, I think, because the, those guys from New York wanted to hire you. It's just, you couldn't go to New York. You're in yeah. DMV. So you're yeah. gonna get jobs like that, okay? okay. Um, CRA, super ambitious. I think, like I said, you have a fighter's chance, but more likely you have a chance to be like a remote site monitor or a, um, or a document specialist for a CRO or trial master file specialist or in-house CRA. Okay. All right. I think I think you get this, and we're gonna have to do a part two uh, when you find out whether you got it or not. Now yes. people are gonna want to know, and I need to put your LinkedIn too underneath because maybe somebody's watching that says, "Hey, I want to hire okay. Victoria right now. Where is she? Okay. Forget about this interview. I'm gonna hire <laughs> you right now." Oh, thanks. Just send yeah, me I'll your uh, LinkedIn, and I'll put it underneath. And then everyone go network with her, follow up with her, see what happened, see if she got it. Um, I recommend for you two groups, okay, for free, okay. Uh -huh. Black Women in Clinical Research, okay. led by Danielle Co. I just had got off a Zoom call with them. And then Latinos in Clinical Research, all ethnicities welcome. So okay. those two is a bunch of networking going on in there. And I think you uh, will benefit from the networking as well. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, and good luck, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So before before we go, I have to do this. Yeah. So guys, whoever's watching this, I, I just want you guys to know that he is exceptional. To be honest with you, you really did help me. And videos posted on 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 YouTube, we're not paying for it. It's free. We're not asking you, but you go out of your way and post these things up for people like us, and it has benefited me a lot. Even though I'm not higher yet. But I'm really appreciative of all of the information you have on there. And I just wanted to put that out. Thank you very much. I appreciate you that, Victoria. It means a lot to me. And good luck. Definitely let me know how it goes. 
And then I'm gonna make sure you send me your LinkedIn so that I, I can put underneath this video and uh, keep it going. Because I think, like I said, you have a fighter's chance and with enough applications, I think you can do it. Normally I don't advise people to do that, but your transferable skills are so similar and you have some shadowing experience. I think it's just a numbers game for you. So keep it up, Victoria. And um, yeah, let's get this. Do the GCP, listen to the book like two or three times. And I think you'll be prepared for the interview. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And thank you guys for watching and listening. And we'll catch you all later. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.